Hey guys, welcome to SC Custom Designs. I want to welcome you into the shop of SNC Custom Designs. Uh, before I forget, um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would ask you to consider subscribing to SC Custom Designs on YouTube and hit the bell if you would like to be notified that a new video went up just as the one you're looking at now. We're, we do a couple of videos a week. I'm doing more than that because I've got one, two more days before I go back to work. Uh, from a long injury to my wrist. Thank you uh, folks for for asking this guy how he's doing um, the wrist. So I fractured my wrist. Um, fractured? Uh, yes, yes. Put a line right down through one of my bones. Um, so, but we're, we're, we're going to go back to work in a couple of days. I'm pretty sure. So you're in the wood shop now because we're going to talk about um, how to face off this otherwise very ugly uh, piece of board. This is manufactured board. This is the dust particle board, um, which believe it or not, it has its place um, in construction in wood. The beautiful thing about a uh, pressed board is that it's, as long as it's supported, okay, in its structure, um, it's going to remain absolutely flat. Okay, it's and it's not going to uh, shrink and enlarge with humidity levels like like this type of wood wood this is a uh, uh, didn't mean to say wood wood but I did um, like like this this is a pine there's all kinds of harder woods that will take a longer time to to expand I'm just looking around here's some oak right so at any rate if you want to uh, I'm I jump all over the place with my subjects and um, hopefully I'm not jumping all over the place with my camera. I'm going to be setting it down now um, up there while I do the rest of the, the video. Um, so we're just going to talk about this. All right, so there's a couple different ways that you can, I mean, there's more than a couple. There's several ways in which you can cover this unsightly uh, front here. They actually sell kits. You can pick them up at Home Depot or Lowe's um, where you actually will... Iron it right on to the edge, okay? Or, yeah, iron it on. And believe it or not. So that was a method that was uh, much alive even in the 70s when I was living in Israel. That's where I learned how to uh, work on things in the wood. So I'm going to show you some real quick, easy ways to deal with this. Okay, so when you're in your wood shop and you're cutting um, strips of this and that and the other, Take those pieces and put them in something like this. Now, it's hard to imagine what this is, um, but this is a, a a vertical sort of a square here that comes up, and I shove in there pieces like this. Okay, this is, for all intents and purposes, veneer. Okay, and this is perfect for putting on the front of of. Uh, the shell, for example, all right? So all you really have to do is to glue it on there. And there's different ways of, of adhering it and, and clamping it and that sort of thing. We'll get into that, all right? Um, if you've got a two by four lying around and you know you wanna do something like that, then you can, and I have this piece here, because that's exactly where um, this piece came from, from a two by four. Okay, so that's another way to, to generate a veneer for facing off your, uh, your projects, all right? So you really, it doesn't take much to build these things up and then store them, or you can make them real quick. And how it's done is, well, you've already done it. You're gonna come up to the table saw and you're just going to rip it, a fine piece off um, with your table saw. It's, it's really that simple, my friends. Okay? Now, once you get to this point where you actually have that sliver, I'm going to go ahead and mount the camera and you're going to say, thank you <laughs> for doing that. I apologize. Until I get uh, another camera uh, with an, an actual oscilloscope in it, um, uh, it's, it's going to be a little bit shaky. I was using this unit here. It's called the view, the eye view. No good. 
paid 150 bucks for it, it's already dead, um, for starters. And two, there, there's no oscilloscope in it, so uh, moving like this um, will make you dizzy. So please have patience with me while we, we figure this out. Um, we have some 300 and, I don't know, 20 or 30 videos now on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. We talk about a variety of things. Um, anytime I'm doing something, I'll stop and I will just talk about how I did that, that specific thing. Like now, we're going to um, put some veneer on here. So first thing I need to do, oh, I wanted to, in the event that you didn't know about such things, and I don't mean to insult anyone's intelligence here, but um, this is a simple tool that we're going to use. It's a sheetrock knife. Um, these she these sheetrock knives are really cool because the blade is locked in place. Okay, it's not going to go in and out and retract. They have the type where you can go like this, right, and it comes in and out. They're very dangerous because when you're going to cut something, that blade will either go in or out and it'll slip. Very very dangerous. I've seen folks get really, really hurt using those types of things. I like the stationary type. Um, always make sure you have a very, very uh, sharp blade. This is new to me to look up on my camera. <laughs> uh, make sure this guy is really, really sharp. And um, if you take it apart real quick, we're going to do that. You're going to see that you're going to store your blades inside uh, the cavity of this unit. Okay. So here you go. Inside here are your spare blades. Keep plenty of those available because the, the, the thing, it's a dangerous thing to use a, a, uh, a blade that is dull. Okay, so that's tip number I don't know what, but there you go. So again, try to avoid the uh, the, the gizmos that you see. Well, let's say they don't have their place, but um, but more often than not, uh, you're just going to be a lot safer using this type of unit. So what we're going to do now, and the camera's way up there, hopefully you can see this, is we just need to very quickly cut this to fit this. I have two. Um, I finished my series on, on uh, updating the hutch working on the hutch and making it more stable and, and how we made these shells here by Reclaim Wood. Um, so look at look up those videos. Um, so the first thing I need to do is simply lay this flat on the ground here. And this is why you need a really sharp blade. Then lie this down on top of the veneer. Okay. I'm going to leave a little bit on both ends. And there's, there's a reason for that. Just a little bit on both ends. Well, just in case something doesn't go right. It's a little bit too narrow, um, this type of thing. And there is a very, very quick way to clean up the edge once it's glued. You use a router, a router bit. So now we're just going to come along uh, very carefully. Um, I should have scored this way first. So let's do that real quick. And lift up on it. And that's how easy it is. We're going to use that piece for, for there, for that one. Now we're just going to come along and you're going to score it several times. You're not going to do this in one pass. Okay. You're gonna, you're gonna get frustrated if you try to do that in one pass. Um, so let's just try to do this. The tricky part is that the, the blade wants to follow the grain of the wood. And the grain of the wood may not be what it is you intend. So I would say, you know, two, three times. I can actually hear it cutting now. You can probably get away with that. And I'm gonna leave the board on here. Well, I'm just going to move it back a little bit. Move it in a little bit. And um, then we're going to just lift up on the wood. And 
that's how easy it is my friends I can use this for some other project so I'll take it and I'll put it back in that that storage uh, unit that I made all right so um, in the last show uh, episode we did I'll be right back I'm gonna get something it's called my third hand Um, this guy here is just wonderful for holding on to wood and being your third hand. So we're just going to put this down on the bench. And bam. We're all set. So now, all we have to do is take this board and center it. Don't worry about being perfect by uh, putting it right on the edge. And... Uh, because this cleans up pretty fast, my friends. So we've got that. Let's go ahead and put a bead of glue. We bought the glue bot. Looked up that episode. Um, this is a pretty, oops, <laughs> pretty cool unit. I think I, I cleaned this up uh, in the last episode. A little bit of water build up in there. So I would say that's not a bad thing. Uh, we had a little bit of water build up in there so that it doesn't dry out. So, okay, we're just going to smooth this out. There's so many, there's things that you can buy that's going to uh, help you to spread out this. And I actually purchased uh, something that, that does this for you. I just don't mind getting my hands in the glue at all. It's not a problem for me. Um, so I bought this, this unit. Uh, let's see if I can find it. I, there it is. So, this guy here from Rockler. I love Rockler products. So, it's a silicone glue tool. I could have very easily just spread it out like this. I, it's not a big deal to me to uh, just use my finger for now. And uh, that's that. So, then we're going to take this and... Uh, have a look at it and see what, what's what, what's the prettiest side, right? So there's going to be a, a side that you would prefer. We're just going to simply lower it on here like this. Okay. And again, don't worry about uh, about getting it perfect. I'd rather that you put it right in the middle, uh, like like this, like I'm doing now. Now we're going to use some clamps called the bandy clamps. I did an episode on this many years ago. Uh, it's called the bandy clamp. Let's hold it up there. You can get this from Rockler. My disclaimer is I'm not a salesman for any of the tools or companies you see in my shop. I just use them. So watch how easy this is. I don't have to nail this. I don't have to clamp it with uh, other types of clamps you may have used in the past. You simply push down on the, on the rubberized um, so, sort of like a uh, elastic material. I'm just going to push down on it like so and let, let it go. That is it my friends. That is it. That's all I have to do. They're called the bandy clamps. They are a bit dusty because I haven't used them in a while. And uh, you may ask, how long does it take for wood to set up? It's wood. Glue. <laughs> I'm a little hungry. I'm a little dizzy. I'm not talking right. So I'm just going to confirm that I feel uh, the, uh, that the unit is, is down in there. Now, what I'd say is put these guys on. And you can reposition them, right? I think I want to go a little bit closer to the edge here with this guy. Let me sort of spread them out a little bit. And believe it or not, in that short period of time, the glue is already starting to work for you. Okay? It's already working for you. I keep a bottle of water close. Uh, I, I have this new roll that I have. It's called a 10 second rule. If I can't find something in 10 seconds, 
that means I need to rethink uh, what it is, uh, how, how I uh, am storing things. If I don't know where something is in 10 seconds, the 10 second rule I call it, then you might want to reconsider um, where you're storing things and, and they should be very close to where you're working. I didn't have to go very far to get, um, get the tools. In this case, a simple thing of, of paper, like paper towels. That's a tool for me. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up the excess glue. If you have never done something like this before, and you come back whenever you think it's dry. Again, this can be dry in as little as a couple of hours. Um, three hours, you know, and you could take your clamps off, even big wood. Okay, it's if it's if it's nice and dry and and, and warm, you know, like this, it's it's definitely going to be ready for you in three hours. Even even so, so you know, sometimes you want to keep something clamped up overnight. I understand, and I do the same thing. So now what I'm going to do is simply move over the bandy clamp and clean under it. Right? Let's do that. Bring it back. And, uh, you know, as long as you're attentive and you come back in a timely fashion, um, you're going to be able to get the wood, sorry, the glue off with, with, with no problems. Okay. So there you go. I love the bandy clamps. The bandy clamps, they just make for an easier um, way of clamping. In the past, you know, I would get out clamps. I got clamps over here, all kinds of clamps, and I'd, I'd have to I'd clamp here and then clamp here, whatever, and everything was moving around when you start applying the pressure. Um, this basically evened out as soon as I put it on. It just centered, okay? So... There you go. Now I don't have enough bandy clamps to do both shelves. So I'll just go ahead and uh, I'm going to bring this upstairs where it's a little warmer. Um, and that'll be that. So there you go. Check it out, my friends. And even as I lift this up, I see a little bit more glue. Glue, glue, glue is funny. Think you got it all, and then you don't. <laughs> That's just what happens. So it's worthwhile taking a little bit of extra time to verify that you got the glue, because there's nothing worse. Well, there's always something worse in life, we know that. But then coming back and thinking you got all the wood, especially sorry, all the glue. I told you I'm hungry. I'm not talking right. Especially when it comes to a project like this, these are bandsaw boxes, and you got the glue that's inside there, and it dried on you. How are you going to get that glue out of there? They have, they actually have tools that you can buy, little scrapers that uh, that are on handles, and um, what, what, just do it right the first time. Just take your time. I found that's one of the one of the biggest mistakes. That I have made um, when I was starting out, and especially because I, I uh, have no problem admitting to you that I have a little bit of a ADD pro situation with me. So my mind is always racing. So remember when I was growing up, my father would ask me a question, I couldn't answer fast enough in my mind, and I'd get the wrong answer. <laughs> It's not the answer I was looking for. So at any rate, um, that's the, the episode. Now, um, I mentioned earlier, uh, no, don't worry about overhang, okay? That can get cleaned up very quickly and efficiently. And you're going to do that with a router. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll do that a little bit later uh, this evening. We'll get a router out. And uh, you put a, a, a router bit in it that's specifically made to right along the edge, okay, and not harm this edge and this edge. It just cleans up the overhang. It's perfect, it, it, you know. Um, 
So if you haven't thought about that, that's definitely a way that uh, you can deal with that. So, um, so I did episode four on you know the hutch, uh, up, upgrading the hutch, uh, and making these shelves out of reclaimed wood. This is what I found. I'll show you. It was this. Anytime I'm riding along the uh, the road, and uh, it's trash night, I will look out for stuff like this. So this would have ended up in a, in a landfill. Instead, it ended up on a piece of, uh, well, for all intents and purposes, a piece of furniture. And again, this man-made material is excellent. It's flat. It's not going to expand and contract. If you, if you support it, it's just going to be stellar for you. If you look around your house, you're going to have a lot of uh, furniture made out of this stuff. So that's how they get away with uh, selling a lot of it, companies, is they'll take nice wood. Uh, for example, I'll show you. Um, this bandsaw box here has African paddock on it. You're not going to see it looking absolutely beautiful because there's dust on it, but look at that wood, my friends. Now look how thin. Look how thin that is. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to move in nice and slow. Let the camera adjust. That is thin. That's African paddock. And I put that on top of uh, uh, otherwise what is a 4x4. Four four. It's just this one here. I stained it and I made this really cool shape. Look up the episodes on the bandsaw boxes. So there we yeah. You can buy the veneer. Um, make the veneer yourself over on a bandsaw. Um, I have some, some oak, but I'm going to bring it over. I have some oak veneer. I'll show you. That is conveniently uh, put on these boards here. Absolutely beautiful oak. Look at that, my friends. Now, that veneer is thin. It's like hair thin. And it's put on the back of, of the board. Okay? So, this is what your furniture is made out of. And before you say, oh, you know, I'm not trying to make you feel bad, it's actually admirable to do that because um, you veneer used to be a, 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 get a bad rap in the earlier days. Um, but, if, you know, if, if you make it right, it's, you're just not going to know, you know. You're not going to know, and you're going to be able to appreciate the beauty of that wood. And you're going to pay a lot less uh, for that furniture. So, yeah, this is sort of a short video. If you watch my videos, they're, they end up being anywhere between 15 and 30 minutes long. And um, realize you don't have a ton of time. But in this case, I hope, hopefully you've learned something. Um, and this is just one way of doing this. There's, there's many ways of making veneer um, and, and applying the veneer and so on and so forth. But I find this, uh, first of all, the banding clamps to be very effective. Um, look how easy that was to put on there. Um, if you've ever done this before, you know that when you start clamping it, everything just slides all over like a ice skating rink. So. Um, thanks for stopping in SC Custom Designs. Uh, if you found us by doing some search, like uh, we had a subscriber just today that found us by uh, searching. And um, we have a variety of topics that we will cover. Anytime I do a project, I will stop and think about the 50 things that I did to make that unit. Okay? All the different tools that I used or could have used, I'm going to pause and we'll reflect on it. And we'll talk about it. So um, there you go. Thanks for coming to my shop. Um, we have to get to, to, to a thousand subscribers. We're now officially at 200. And we're just thank you guys. We're, we're going to do a promo uh, where we're going to give away a couple of the bandsaw boxes you see here. Um, what we'll do is this, if you're helping me out and just spread the word, say, hey, there's this really cool guy. Um, he makes things like this of himself. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of fun to make. 
look up that episode. Basically, you print something out on the printer and um, put it on the wood with just some uh, there's a, a five popular different ways of doing it. One of them is an iron, just like ironing on veneer. Um, that is made to do such things. But we talk about a variety of things. But we're going to begin giving the we'll shipper right to your house. Um, but you can imagine we got a long way to go. What we're going to do is just um, I will ping everybody just through YouTube and uh, ask you to send in if you want to win at the Bands Out Box and you helped us spread the word. Um, just send in your name, your email address, and we'll do a drawing. We'll just shake it up, pick it up. And I guarantee, I guarantee you there's at least two bandsaw boxes that are, be going, that are going to go out. And uh, bandsaw boxes can be very interesting. Okay. Um, look at this guy. This is, this is not my design, my friend. Although I took some liberty to do this in the back. Looks like something from Dr. Seuss. So this is a bandsaw box. It's, it's all one solid piece of wood that this came out of. If you follow the grain, you'll see the grain comes across like so. That's one style. I just showed you this style here. Okay. Just a ton of fun to make, my friends. So look at this guy. He's He was just uh, lying around the shop. So I made a bandsaw box out of that one. Um, look at this guy. This is just having fun. That's definitely something from Dr. Seuss. Um... And we, there's some fancy ones out there. I actually bought a, a bandsaw box uh, book that I that I go through, and I get ideas from. So we're gonna be giving some of those away. Oh, I want to bring this guy over. He is pretty. All right, let me just spray him real quick. Look at this! How beautiful this is, my friends. Wouldn't you like to win that one, or something like that? So basically a uh, bandsaw box and I've done a lot of bandsaw boxes on YouTube but we put that paddock on the sides this is, this is supposed to be a reflection of the uh, the drawer a lot of fun making these guys so it's, it's gonna be a small way to show our appreciation uh, for you guys helping us get like I said we're at 200 subscribers I can just knock things over one at a time and uh, we got to get to a thousand, so eight hundred more. Yeah, that's daunting. But um, with your help, we can get there. But most of all, I want you to enjoy my videos. Enjoy it. Um, there's going to be humor. I w I actually had a uh, a mask on this weekend that you cleanse your face with because the ladies were doing it in the house. I'm like, what about me? And so I, I pulled a little bit of a surprise and I looked that video up. So. Uh, I think that was uh, the, the last day of January, February, March, April, April. So there you go. All right. Thanks, guys. I'm going to go ahead and let you go. Um, got any questions? Just let us know. And uh, we get back to the posts. And um, we will... Uh, Let's just get a little bit of a closer look at this. Isn't that cool, my friends? That's pretty cool. Let's do a flyover. A little bit of a flyover there. Yeah, this is a simple thing to do. So simple to make this. It, you just never may, you may, have, may never have thought about uh, how to do such things. So that's what we're here for. We're here to inspire. Um, I also like to learn from you guys. Uh, there's this uh, thing where folks are sending in uh, tours of their wood shop. Um, I did a tour of my wood shop, but now we're going to go to the next level. We're going to show you the tools in the wood shop. I did an episode on this is the tools. These are the tools if you're just starting out. Uh, for about $300, you could just get just about every tool you need to do what you got to do. After all, la madre que va a desestrear, la madre que va a decir todo, fine, crazy. I lived in Israel and I learned how to do some carpentry. That's where I started to learn. We only had this saw here. Uh, we had the miter box, which is under here somewhere. Uh, we had a, 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 wind, uh, a, a wooden uh, hammer, right? Just the very basic things. And this scorer here, what helps you to score lines near the edge of things. And of course, your faithful uh, chisels.
that type of thing and rasps. Yep, we did a lot of things. Coping sauce, right? I think I got a coping saw. Got a coping saw up here. And I'll uh, tell you what, they're coming out with some very interesting coping saws. Uh, really fancy and allow you to do some really interesting things. Um, so uh, we're going to be moving on to uh, the projects for our shows. We got a Rotterdam Junction, New York. Two of my kids were actually born in, in this place. Um, it's the, called the Maybe House, the Maybe Farm. Uh, we're going to be using this jig here to make dovetail joints. Um, I've done uh, some videos on this guy here on the Lee D4R Pro. Simply one of the best, if not the best, uh, jig in the world. 24 inches. You can move the pins around. Once you set the pins, you do the pin and then flip this over to the tails. It's that simple, my friends. So we're going to be uh, having a lot of fun. I'm not really sure what I'm going to be making. You know, we've made trays and uh, bands. Uh, we, uh, these are leaning ladder shelves uh, that are not sold yet, by the way. So these are just sitting here, ready to get uh, put together, go to the next level. So I love, I love my wood shop. This is not what I do uh, for, a for a living necessarily. We are a company. We're SE Custom Designs, uh, doing business as here in, a, in a upstate New York. Um, but I'm a QA software guy in the daytime. And uh, we like to do, I like to do this at night. So thanks. Thanks for coming to my shop. I appreciate that. Take care, guys. Uh, the next episode is going to be where we'll, we'll get the router out and we're going to clean this up real quick. You'll be surprised how, how easy this was.